Good morning everybody, Victor here. Big thank you to Ryan for inviting us out on Escobia today. Absolutely welcome, I'm excited to have you guys. Yeah man, this guy right here put me on my first ever golden tilefish. Tony, Tim, been crushing the cobia. That's hopefully one of the species we get on today. My good friend Johnny right here has also got a YouTube channel. You guys can find that link below. We're dropping jigs today. Yeah, we are. Definitely All slow pitch, jigs. baby. You never know what you're gonna catch on the jig. See you guys out there. We are going to have a gorgeous day. It is flat calm. I want to say this is probably the calmest day I'm fishing out here in months. Literally, maybe six months. Tony's on. Oh. First official fish in the boat right there, trigger fish. We got this little nice trigger. It's got a trigger part up here that we can't move. You just gotta hit this little trigger spot right there and it comes down. Just like that. We're gonna let this puppy go. A little small. Damn Tony, you're a natural. Where's your YouTube channel? <laughs> Look like whatever. Oh, there we go. Nice hookup. I so I've heard these things called multiple things. Isn't it also called a toro? Yeah, glass eye toro. Glass eye toro. We used to catch a ton of these while yell tail snapper fishing. You guys see how big his eyeball is right there? Any fish with a big eyeball is usually a really nocturnal fish. Tony's hooked up right behind us. We'll get him back in the water, but you usually see these a lot more at night and they actually get much bigger. They smell really bad when you catch them, but they taste great. I've eaten these before. Tim, what the heck did you hook a submarine? It was. What did it feel like before it turned into the man in the gray suit? Um, felt really good. Let's see what happened here. What? Put his face on. No. Okay, so what is the mouth? That's that's not a bit uh, too small of a mouth, is it? Nope. That's a snapper mouth, isn't it? Grouper, I think. Grouper? That's grouper. You got shark. I did. Yeah. That's still edible though. You could put it on a... <laughs> What are you yeah. gonna do with that? Well, you, you got just, any recipes? You put it on a toothpick and you yeah. get your lighter and you roast it. Okay. That's with a, a little a, bit of hot a, sauce and mayonnaise. And I don't know, Vic, you're a better cook than me. You can you can put make that a stew together. out of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, you you guys can save this. I'll leave it for you. You had a lot of pressure on that fish to rip the lips off like that. That's crazy. <laughs> Wild. Oh man. Oh, he may have gotten sharp. 100%. The pull is just too linear now. All right, let's crank up the drag a little bit. Oh, it's not <laughs> breaking, huh? I guess that line's strong. All you did was piss off the shark. For all you guys at home wondering about all these slow pitch rods that you guys think are so nimble and weak, look at that. He's probably got 20, 25 pounds of drag on that fish, completely bent over, no issue. It's actually nice to let this rod do what's meant to do every now and then. Remember when I told you guys it was calm? How are we feeling about that sentiment now, Johnny? I, I have five gallon buckets of water being sprayed on me every second here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's definitely not calm anymore, but that's all right. Drop it to the bottom, jig, jig, jig. Next jig, jig. Know, something hits it, set the hook. That's one thing you got to do with these SPJ setup. When you get the bite, you better make sure you set that hook. Sometimes you lose them on the spot, other times you don't, but you want that secure hook set. Coloring moment. Foul hook jack. Foul hook. It'll make any man think it's a grouper. <laughs> At some point we'll get what we're looking for, but right now we got an Amico. So cool. Now they got that huge dorsal fin right there. I'll let this guy go to get bigger. They're decent eating. They do have worms for some of them. I've caught, cut open some, some have worms. Tony's been on fire today. He hooked up again. And this fish is almost spooling him. Everybody just reeled up so we could taste this fish potentially. What do you got, like a quarter spooler? Yeah, he took it down. I can finally get some crank in. Fish are really giving you a workout today, Tony. I don't know what it is. There he goes. I don't know if you guys can relate, but I love hearing drag peeling out on a spinning reel, but you don't ever get that on a conventional. So whenever I like point the camera at someone, I'm like, look at all this line being peeled off. You guys can't really tell at home, but on a spinner. 
No better sound in the world. We call it ESPN mode. So you, you, want, you want the reel in ESPN mode so you can hear the action. Not only just see it, but you can hear it. We're about halfway through this fight, and if you guys like fishing as much as I do, it's where today's video sponsor comes in Fish and Clash. Big thank you to them. I'll catch you guys back in a little bit. And if you want to find out what Tony's going to catch, you guys got to stick around. Fish and Clash is a free mobile game for both iOS and Android. You guys can use my code LANDSHARK to get yourselves a free gift linked below. Much like you guys, I love to fish, but we all know Mother Nature has other plans sometimes, so Fish and Clash allows me to get my fix in on those bad weather days. Oh, boss fight, all right. We got a big fish coming in. Whoa. Yellow eye snapper, deep water fish. One thing I really love about this game is you can fish all around the world in really cool exotic locations. I love games where you can level up or advance in the game. In Fishing Clash, you can upgrade your lures, collect different rods, compete with other fishermen from around the world, and my favorite part is the fact you can catch fish from all around the world. The more you play, the better your skill set becomes and you'll get access to bigger and rarer fish. If you guys want to support the channel and play a really fun game, Download Fishing Clash for free, iOS and Android. There's gonna be a QR code on the screen here, as well as a link in the description box below. And best of all, Fishing Clash is hooking you guys up with a free gift valued at $20. All you gotta do is use my code Landshark and follow the three simple steps on the screen. You'll receive a three star rod, one mythical lure, 50 luck power-ups, and 30 weight power-ups to help you catch bigger and rarer fish. Big thank you once again to Fishing Clash for sponsoring today's video. It's a free game, guys. You got nothing to lose. Check it out. Link below. Use my code Landshark. Now let's get back to fishing. And we're back, baby. Now, the world wants to know, what does Tony have on the other end of his line? Is it a baby whale? Is it a yellowfin tuna? Or is it probably an amberjack? I gotta say one thing. I trust Tony's knots after today. Yeah. He's got some good knots. Well, this is big battle with number two. First one kind of wore me out. The first one was a shark, which we never saw, but it was a shark. Oh, yeah. Didn't want to spend the entire hour trying to pull them up, so I made a call of tightening down that drag and make sure something gets. Turn the shark or break off. I you swear. Hurry up. You. The shark is coming. Go away, shark. Yeah, shark is Go coming. Go away. Go away. Hey, boys, we got a live gaff. Oh, here. boy. Oh, he did get it. Oh, you already got him. You already oh, got it. Oh, man. Oh, that's what happened. Yep. So maybe you're fighting the shark. Partly there, Tony. Yeah, I guess Here. that's why. Dude, look at the carnage on that. Yep. There you go. <laughs> so this is what happens when a shark gets to it. We got a nice healthy AJ that was fighting. I can't tell you if I was fighting the fish plus the shark. But however things worked out, we got a catch. We know we caught. See two different size jaw. Uh, sizes on the fish yeah. as well but uh, you know what though it's still harvestable and you can get some fish off of I mean it's get some meat off of that fish and smoke absolutely. it absolutely yeah. yeah. that guy's not going to waste at all so you guys have seen me personally eat the worms in an amberjack and you can actually see a worm in this amberjack right there let's see if we pull them out okay so this this is a little spaghetti worm they're completely harmless to humans um, Part of this spaghetti worm's life cycle is they grow up in a shark's guts. Shark eats amberjack infested with worms. Worms propagate, reproduce in shark's stomach. Sharks excretes its waste and then it gets blown out into the ocean. Then little fish eat it and then it repeats itself over and over and over again. But pretty cool to see the life cycle in action right there. All right, boys and girls, we got a triple hookup right here. Ryan and Tim, and Johnny. I'm not stopping them. You guys must have big AJs or something because every you, all of you guys basically got a bunch of line dumped, didn't you? Yeah. Did you peel them? Johnny, what is your hook? Um, it's the day of giants, dude. The big AJs are out and about, aren't they? <laughs> you see that? Yeah. yeah, that's a big AJ. Like that. So we're tight guys and I, I just hooked up on a big fish. Ryan, how's yours doing? Is it? I don't think it's as big. No? So you're actually able to turn your fish? Yeah, well now he's gone. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> he got camera shy. Bent hooks again. What? God. 
What are those? Those are thick head. hooks, though. That was a good fish. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like the. It looks like it broke. I think right at the PR knot. I'm almost 99% sure that it was a shark. So I'm okay with losing that fish. But we still got Ryan tight right yeah. here. We're about 10 minutes into this fish too. We right, guys, have thousand. color. All the way up. Oh, dude, he's right there. He snuck up on us. Yeah. Look at all the bubbles he just blew. Oh, that's a... Oh, 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 oh. Watch that jig. All right. One of us can get a whole fish in the boat. It had to have been Ryan. Our first fish, and it was a good one. <laughs> oh, baby. I'm going to join you. Yep. There we go, man. All right. I think we're in the tunas. Tony just hooked up. I just hooked up. Oh, yeah, that's a tuna all day. No, it's about the same. Okay, over the rail and into Vic's catching fuck you go. We got tuna for dinner. Not big, but... Oh! Tim might have a big one on. Little football. Always got to show you guys that on video. Such a cool little fish. And a lot of people neglect these little guys. They eat just the same. <laughs> All right, I'd say we got an AJ on this time. I'm in the pain club with Tim. Well, I dropped the high speed jig down all the way to the bottom and I'm pretty sure I'm in. Woo! I'm due for about a 15 minute fight on this setup right here. What tackle are you using? This is uh, Ocean's Legacy Adrenaline Rod. Got some tough line braid. About to be spooled. Mustad jig. Yeah, we gotta have to tighten up on this fish for sure. Uh-oh. Dude, these fish don't play, these amberjacks. So many people turn their nose up to them. They are the best fighting fish offshore in Florida, hands down. Oh, they brawl. And they also taste good. So many people don't like them, man. We got two in the box to make smoked fish dip with, but they're also just good grilled. got ourselves a double AJ. Look at how cool these fish are, guys. Tim's fish is way more green than mine. Mine's got that more signature amber color. You got some purples in there. Real similar size fish, about half the size of Ryan's, and that's probably why it took half the time, but there's a shark down there waiting for these amberjacks, so hopefully they make it down there in time back to their home and they don't get eaten, but having fun out here. Oh yeah. On the jigs, all on the jigs today, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we like <laughs> Oh, they're swimming off good. Yeah. All right, Tim, you're up first. Tim's challenging my fillet skills. I want to see what he's got. Oh, you're already 30 seconds too long. <laughs> <laughs> that one little bit of hard skin right yeah, there. Yeah, always. Even on a little one, those little tunas, they just have that, like right there by the dorsal fin, it's always that tough skin. You know, the nice thing about flying, you get out of cleaning the boat. But through, there it is. Not bad, Tim, not bad. Too nice little. And I always yeah. gotta do that Victor look through. We really did not bleed this guy. Look at how bloody it is. I know. Man, you guys see this flay table is covered in blood. You know what, it doesn't scare me at all. You know what scares me? Exposing this fish to fresh water. Yep. Big no-no. That's like the number one thing if I could get everyone to do. There's so many people that I meet who have been saltwater fishing for years 
and they've been rinsing off their saltwater fillets with fresh water for years and it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. Okay. If you guys have been doing that, try without it. This blood is not gonna kill you. Don't get your guts and stuff in there, but take some paper towels when you get in the kitchen, pat it dry. When you get beef, when you get a steak, guess what? It's got blood on it. Chicken, all that, it cooks out. You're not gonna die from a little blood on your fish, but fresh water really denatures that protein. I've never filleted a half-eaten fish, but here it goes, nothing. Let's go with the AJ right here. So Ryan's gonna save this fish and um, actually make fish dip out of it. And then once you get to the spine, then you gotta go back down the other side because it's got a hump in it, right? Yep. Oh dude, look at this. His um, backbone actually broke. That shark completely destroyed it. I'm not worried about this fillet looking pretty because it's already <laughs> looked <laughs> ugly before I started. No, oh, he's doing good. Yeah. You, got, you got the, uh, you got my seal of approval here. Aw, oh, thanks, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> my first ever half filleted shark. You know what? I'm feeling a little adventurous. Oh no, uh, don't I'm do doing it. it. No, no, do I'm it. I'm doing babe. it, Johnny. Oh my god. Okay, look, this, this is just because I'm so tired of people saying amberjack or trash fish are bad. No. Oh, dude. That was a raw. Was I, that staged? I, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that you just did that. You want to try one? I'm not. Well, come on. Listen. If they're cooked, I'll eat it, but I can't do it, man. I just can't. And some amberjacks have it worse than others. Like this guy has it really bad in the tail, but if you usually look towards the head half of an amberjack, there's usually not much. I'm gonna show you guys a very easy, tasty way to prepare your amberjack. But first, we're going to make a little chimichurri, tomato, cucumber salad, also very easy. Take some grape tomatoes, cut them in half, and then over here, this is about equal parts of cilantro, parsley, and fresh oregano, chopped or minced very fine. A little bit of English cucumber, and then two little baby shallots and one clove of garlic. And since this garlic is gonna be raw, it really packs a punch, so we don't wanna overdo it. One clove, one big clove, all you need. We gotta go in with some red wine vinegar. Olive oil, I'm gonna do about Quarter cup of olive oil, coriander, salt, black pepper. In there. Okay, now we mix. Pretty sure it's Paula Deen, but a pinch of sugar goes a long way and it never hurts. Just a little bit of sugar. Look at that. Look at all these beautiful colors pop. I want to eat it already. Real simple. Amberjack. Blackened seasoning. Favorite one of your choice? Our favorite is this Chef Paul's right here. Okay, and I did cut my amberjack actually in half because amberjack is a very firm fish that can overcook easily. It's pretty lean. You don't want a thick piece. Nice and hot. We're gonna go in with some olive oil. Seasoned side down. Make sure you always go away from you. I really seared it on one side, gave it a good blackened crust, threw in that knob of butter. Now I'm gonna tilt the pan to one side right here, and we're just gonna base our, we're gonna base our fish right here with the butter. Now, since this is all very rich, you got a lot of butter in there, even it out with some acid, some lemon juice. 
Okay, you got your little tomato cucumber chimichurri salad. And then now, nice piece of blackened gamber jack right on top. Something so simple can look so elegant. Blackened amberjack, just like that. For those of you who have never had amberjack, look at this. Flaky, yet firm. Nice big flakes, kind of like a grouper. Look at that. Comes out white. No worms. Can't see the worms. Nothing but delicious, fresh Florida seafood right here. You can never go wrong with a blackened fish and to pair it with something fresh like this like little salsa thing that Victor made, it's absolutely delicious. I don't care what kind of fish it is, blackened fish is always delicious. I don't think amberjack is a bad fish, amberjack is great. It's a fish that you can do a lot of different things with because it's really firm and I think that's a really good quality to have for a fish. <laughs> but it's really delicious, so good job, Vic. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching, and big shout out to Fishing Clash for sponsoring today's video. On all those windy days when you guys can't get offshore, pull out your phone, download some Fishing Clash, and get to fishing. Relatively slow day for jigging. Didn't get the groupers that we talked about that we wanted, but made a great day out of something. They took home some amberjack, we got some tunas, we got a dinner, we got some fish for the family, and that's all that matters. And that is what being a responsible outdoorsman is all about. And that's what I've come to realize and learn. Not every day is going to be a slave fest and there's no need for that. Time on the water beats everything. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.